All right, so here we go. This is uh, technically day three of the cure. This uh, part so far has seen two long days at elevated temperatures. Um, today it saw about 90 degrees for most of the day, and uh, we're going to demold it. So I'm pretty excited to see what we have here. And, you know, obviously this is going to be a learning process as well if it doesn't turn out 100%, but basically this is like Christmas to me and, and you as well here watching this. So let's get to it, and I'll demold and... Uh, explain as much as I can what uh, my observations of what I see and what I can do if I can do anything better. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. All right. So basically I have these C-clamps on here. They're actually just very lightly uh, tightened on there. I'm not trying to compress the mold by any means. I think it was Kev, Kev who asked a good question about doing a, uh, you know, like a boxed-in frame to keep more torsional, torsional rigidity in, the, in a flexible tool and just overall more support. And uh, that actually is a really good way to, to do it. Um, of course, a really simple flat square mold like this, you know, just between two plates is, is a pretty good way to keep it at least straight, you know. But, you know, you could technically warp it around if you, if you weren't careful. Uh, it being a long tool with the long keys in it, I'm not really all that worried on this one. But uh, that was a good question, and that is a good observation. And actually, it is a good, a good method for building flexible tools. Um, the other good thing, too, is this, this is a 45 Shore A durometer silicone, which for silicones is on the, the higher end for flexible tools. Uh, the most common flexible silicone uh, castable material is about a 60 shore A. That's about where they top out. There's a couple that are a little bit higher, but for the average, uh, 60 is about as, as high as they go. So 45 is not too bad. All right. there's a bit of static building up on here. That's the one interesting thing about silicone is they, they do get a little bit of a static build up on it. So that's why I'm, I'm putting this mold back face down. I don't want dust to collect on it and everything. All right, I got this fill gate over here. Uh, my first impressions of the part are actually really good. I've got Got a bubble here, decent sized bubble. Let me see if I can lift this up and give you a show. Basically, there's a little bubble right there. Oops, sorry, can't see it there. Right there. And a couple other little minor ones. Um, I can fix that, that's pretty easy. Pot it in with a little bit of extra material. And there are some bubbles along the ridges along the top here, some little pinholes, but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy. Right, so, yeah. Definitely got a good cure. Um, yesterday, when I was kind of bending these they were still a little bit brittle. Now they're just sort of, this is the flashing that was on the outside of the tool. Now they're bending in half. There's basically, it's showing me that the properties are up and it's got some good elongation properties. So it'll bend before it breaks. If it were breaking, it'd still be considered brittle uh, or in some somewhat of what we, what we call a green stage. And so uh, it, needed, it definitely needed more curing. Careful at this end. This one's that little delicate fill gate. Alright, peeling out quite nicely. Alright. 
down for a second and get the mold lid quickly back on. <clears throat> Keep any dust out. There we go. So overall, this thing looks really, really cool. Um, you know, it's full of air, so it almost has a frosted look to it. But as you can see, it's, I mean, it's glass smooth. There's, I've got one little minor issue here that I'll see about um, repairing. I'll just pot it in with some material. But basically, this just needs some basic trimming. Very little flashing at all, hardly anything. Just a little wet sand will take care of it. This front interface looks really good, and this looks good here. So, go from there.